giving such a grand intro my whole life. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I think the best and the worst part of my speech always is that I never prepare for them. There was one guy who escorted me here uh, from your from your college one day who escorted me from the hospital to this place. That time only I was actually sitting and thinking what the speaker was trying to jot on points, but I think he's a very, very uh, uh, sharp and shrewd guy. So every two minutes he was studying behind and asking, Sir, do you conduct free camps? Do you do this? Do you do that? I was like, Damn, give me some time. I need to <laughs> think on what to speak about. So only on the way I was actually thinking uh, what to talk about. Uh, but then I just realized that uh, the best and the worst uh, topic, the best and the worst example always happens to be myself. So let me just talk about myself and the topic that I would like to touch upon is the purpose of life. Uh, I would divide this into three parts. How one should learn to live life, how one should learn to love life and how one should learn to give in life. So, uh, talking about living, uh, just like all, all of you or just like most, most kids when they grew up, uh, I was merely existing during the early stages of my life. I was uh, living as in the dictionary meaning, uh, defined living, okay, you breathe, you eat, you drink, you sleep. So precisely that is what I was doing for a very long time, uh, a carefree life, not knowing a purpose in life. I was uh, the most uh, troublesome uh, uh, kid to my parents as a student. Uh, in school, right from being the first rank holder, uh, after 10th, 11th and 12th, okay, I started sliding down. I became the last rank holder, a failure in school. Uh, so much that I had to stay at home, write the exam again, the public exam. The public exam, then I got about 90 something percent in my improvement. After that I got into medicine. My parents thought, okay, finally our son has gotten some seriousness in life. Uh, they were wrong. I was out to prove them wrong. I was like, how can you ever wrongly think that your son is finally uh, getting, getting some seriousness in life? So to prove them wrong, in college, I went to be the worst possible student in college. By, uh, by the time I reached final year, okay, all my colleagues were already finishing their PG post-graduation. So I studied with my juniors and their juniors and their juniors. So uh, at one point of time, I started thinking, how long more do I go on like this? I did everything, okay? I smoked, I drank, uh, I studied uh, in St. Deeds, okay? It's a school that has given me excellent command over the English language. I always used to put it to the uh, wrong uses. Uh, I used to, all my English skills were always displayed okay, to all the good looking girls in school and in college. When in school I used to, life used to be all about impressing rosary matriculation school girls who, live, who studied opposite. And while in college again it was all like, okay, see I speak so, such good English, okay, so uh, may I know more about you ragging girls, all this only was like. So at some point of time, I thought, okay, there should be some seriousness. What do I do with my life? Uh, I saw one uh, Rajnikanth interview on TV, which most of you might not be aware of, because it's not something that has been repeated a lot, uh, very often. That interview actually said, Rajnikanth divided life into, it's something like that Basha song, but that time Basha was not out. He was saying, you know, you have to divide life into different stages. There are, there are stages of innocence, there are stages of ignorance, there are stages of having fun, maturity, all that. He said, between 20 and 30 years of age, that time alone, all of you be very, very careful. Because during those 10 years, if you waste your life, your entire life is finished. That hit me really hard. Not that immediately as I saw that, I thought, Pah, Taleva Sultan, the Rajikan said, so hereafter, from tomorrow, immediately, just like how in the Padayapa song comes, by the starting of the song, I'll start breaking uh, uh, stones and at the end of the song, I'll come and get on universities. My life didn't change like that. It was just somewhere in the corner of my mind. Fear crept into me 
during the end of my course where I realized that my parents were not doctors. I had to go out into the world. I had to face a lot of people. I had to face a lot of patients and precious lives were being entrusted to me. Whereas me, I did not have any confidence when I, when I was supposed to be studying, I did not study. And I realized that all the other students, okay, they had their parents who were doctors, hospitals to inherit, all good backup they had. So what I did was, fear gripped me. During my internship, this truly when I started studying properly. When everybody else was relaxing, I started studying. And when I started studying, I made sure that I made up for all the foolishness that I had exhibited in my past. When everybody else was having a ball of a time, okay, internship, nobody needs to study. I started even working in a private hospital. Seriousness came. I then became the head of intensive cardiac care in a private hospital, just being an MBBS. And that was a huge responsibility from a corporate hospital. Okay, so that kind of recognition that they gave me, okay, put some more confidence into me. Okay, Mono, you're not so useless after all. You can be something, you can do something. So I started uh, treating patients, especially the critical care ones. I started resuscitating cardiac arrest, which is a very big responsibility. Again, everything has a flip side. When you do these things, slowly you start believing that you have haunts. So, uh, my attitude changed. I thought, okay, fine, hey, what is this? This guy is going and doing PG here, this guy is going, going and doing PG there. I am doing so well myself, just being an MBBS. I am smarter than all of you. So, I thought, let me start a private practice also. I started a private practice. Uh, it was on East Coast Road. I opened the clinic. First day, I got a few patients. Second day, no patients. Third day, no patients. Fourth day, no money for diesel. Fifth day, nearing shutting down the clinic. Sixth day, pharmacist looking at me in a very sarcastic way as to what is happening to your patient in flow, you seem to be coming and reading the newspaper and believing every day. Suddenly, seventh day onwards, patients started coming in. I had a good name. On the eighth or eighth day, I realized that I had to start an IV line for a dehydrated patient, which I could not. I used to put central venous lines for uh, critical care patients back in the corporate hospital where I worked. But a simple IV line, okay, for a dehydrated patient, I couldn't put. That's when I realized that overconfidence is your worst enemy. Never be overconfident in life. I was overconfident. I had missed the simple things in life. I went back to the hospital. I asked my nurse, kindly teach me. Kindly teach me the basics. I learned the basics. And once I learned the basics, I was a better doctor. I was a better human being. My approach towards patients has to never take anything lightly. That came. And while I was in this stage of life, I got a good break in the form of becoming the medical director of Bill Roth Group of Hospitals. That time I was 29 years old and I was probably the youngest medical director in the whole of South India. It was a great responsibility, a scary responsibility. I was telling myself, okay, it's all good to flaunt your visiting card and all that. The moment I walk into the hospital, people look at me, people look at me like, dude, your age is my experience, don't you realize that? Right? So I had to overcome all that. I had to show that youngsters okay, could still shine and make a difference without hurting the sentiments of the people who are above us, who are our seniors, who are there to guide us. Ever since there has been no looking back, there has been no turning back. I had one uh, uh, pathetic thing about myself. I used to weigh uh, about uh, 120 kgs. I used to weigh 120 kgs. I treated a patient, a young patient, uh, heart attack, 33 years old. They asked me, how can he get a heart attack? I said, he can get a heart attack, he's 120 kgs. They looked at me and they're like, dude, you're 120 kgs too, how come you haven't died yet? So I realized that I had to set an example, okay, to be able to advise others. I lost weight. I lost weight. And then again, I was a more confident person. As a human being, as a physician, as somebody who has the responsibility to give advice to others. So I did just that. I started working for Bilroth Hospitals. It started off as a corporate hospital only then. Even before that, it existed as a hospital. My managing director is a person who is three years younger than me. So I started deriving my motivation from him. If he can be the owner of the hospital, okay, managing the whole thing, okay, then I could do it too. I could probably do it a little better because, you know, we'll always have that I am two, three years older than you, types. 
So uh, that motivation I got from you. Started managing the group. Till now we are going strong. Uh, we treat so many patients. Yes, of course, nothing comes for free. We charge people, obviously. That's our hospital runs a private hospital. But then we do a lot of social responsibility activities also. We do things like conducting free cancer camps, free uh, service-oriented camps, uh, public awareness campaigns to educate people about the need for good health. See, it is actually unfair for me to put all this in a nutshell, okay? but I am very mindful of that monitor there, okay? which says time is ticking away. So, I am putting, putting a lot of things into a power packed small capsule, though I would love to speak a lot more to you. Whenever I uh, treated patients, I always used to, in, in Tamil there is a saying that goes like, Urar vittu pule avundu nama oti vilata nama kolundu thana vilaru. Anmari, so many times, so many people, friends, relatives, friends of friends, 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 neighbor, friends, friends, neighbors, dogs, trainers, mom. All these people will come to me because they are not well. It might, for them it might be just one simple phone call, they will say, Something happened, can you please find out what happened doctor? I will call this doctor, that doctor, go meet the patient, see the patient, go through all the records, make sure the adequate help is given to such people. At 2 o'clock in the morning, when you will all give me the call and go to sleep, I will go to the hospital. I will go to the hospital, I will see what is wrong with your friend's friend's mother, with whom I am not connected at all. When I do that, I tell myself that if I do all this, God might bless me, he will take care of my parents. My father suffered a heart attack in April this year. I rushed him to the hospital. We operated on him. I could not save him. He is no more. He passed away on the 25th of April. I realized that life leaves nothing behind for you. When my dad was being buried, my mom asked me, It's a graveyard and you are burying him. This is Chennai. It will be very hot. Can't you air condition the grave when well, you cannot? You realize that there is nothing that you can take home at the end of the day. There is nothing that you can take with you once you are dead. It's ashes to ashes and dust to dust. You know that put me in a state of depression for about one month. I was thinking, what is this? I have saved so many people. I have been there for so many people. God could have given my dad one chance. I realized, I found the answer one month later. 29 years of age, God made me director of Bilbao Hospitals. Was I grounded? I did not ground. There are so many other people who are not director of Bilbao Hospital or any other hospital for that matter. They have their father and mother with them. Okay? But I have been made somebody special in life, in society by God. I took that with a smile, right? So I realized that when God decides to stay, take somebody away, even the best of treatment, the best of hospitals, the best of technology cannot help because it is God's decision. And God seemed to tell me, Manoj, I have blessed you so much in life. I am going to take your dad away. But you are nobody to question or judge God and his ways. You know what you should do? Stay back and help the moms and dads of every side of engineering college student, Hindustan college student, anybody for that matter. My purpose in life has been that. It has been decided that way by God. After my dad passed away, I will probably save the lives of some 25 to 30 people. I see my dad and my mom in each and every one of them. That is the purpose of life. That is the very, very purpose of life. I wish that service-oriented attitude comes into every engineering, IT, non-medical, medical, any field for that matter. And to have that kind of an attitude, my request to all of you is, Follow a few things in life. The next time you think of something beautiful, never forget to count yourself. Always believe that you are beautiful in the first place. Have your self-confidence, have your self-esteem. Only when I developed that, I grew in life. Secondly, I have already said this in most of my other speeches. I would still like to repeat it because I want you people to have the benefit okay, of taking this message home. If you do not stand for something, you will fall for anything. Always have a purpose, a value and a goal in life. Do not jump from one decision to another. Be focused on one particular thing and keep going in that direction. Thirdly, 
when you have to think of your responsibilities right now you might think that my responsibility is studying well making my parents happy keeping them you know smiling all the time okay i am paying so much of fees in in turn you know my kids are doing well you have another responsibility go home if you have not watched life of pi watch it again that movie sent a very powerful message across to me i realized that one year back when my uncle passed away but before i could fully implement what that movie taught me okay i lost my dad what life of pi says is that it might be too late to say goodbye if you want to postpone the time that you spend with your dad and your mom the love and affection that you want to give your mom and your dad some other day some other day some other day that day might never come today there are so many things that i would like to do for my dad but my dad is not with me anymore i have received awards after my dad passed away this this month's 10th anniversary edition of rich magazine has a four page feature on me under the category namma chennai people that we love i want my dad to read it i want my dad to read it but he probably probably be in heaven today so why you have the opportunity care for your parents make sure you take your parents and get them a master health check up done in any hospital i am not promoting bilwa hospitals go to any hospital nearest hospital you do not know what silent physical illnesses they have it is your responsibility to care for the people who feed you and who give you love and affection and who spend for you also one more point never forget no matter what life is always beautiful and for me and for you there are always miles to go before we sleep and your goals are very difficult for you my profession is very difficult for me there are so many people today who are on the verge of giving up probably i can never clear probably i can never pass even i wanted to try dying okay but then i realized i'd rather die try all the best to all of you thank you for being such a lovely audience